Hey there, Aquarius. Welcome to your reading for July 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading. Yes, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. You will also find in the description box some links to calculate both either your Eastern or your Western astrological charts. Um, I took that out. It was in there for a while, but then I took it out a few months ago and I've been wanting to put it back. And so, yes, thus, now it's there. Um, check them out. See which ones you resonate more with more. It really, you really don't have to, although if you're finding, oh shoot, I got to plug my laptop in. If you're finding that something may not be resonating with you um, and it's your normal signs that you um, pay attention to, maybe try checking out your Eastern side um, and seeing how that fits. Maybe that'll be a little more resonant. I know personally I resonate more with my Eastern chart than I do with my Western, but it changes, you know, it flip flops every once in a while. But anyway, all right, cool. Um, also keep in mind that these messages are timeless. So whenever you're watching them and they resonate for you at that moment, then it is the message for you at that time. It doesn't have to just be for the month of July. Okay. The dates are just for organizational purposes. Okie dokie. All right, Aquarius, let's get into this because, um, yeah, so I have the pre shuffle here for you. Um, and I feel like whomever I'm channeling for right now, we're talking relationships here. Uh, particularly the, the strongest one I'm picking up, the strongest energy I'm picking up on is a romantic relationship. Um, it could it possibly, it could possibly be a marriage and I'll, I'll explain in a second. Um, the first card that came out here was the three of swords. Okay. And you know, the three of swords doesn't have to necessarily be heartbreak in a relationship. It could just be, you know, anything that is traumatizing, damaging, um, emotionally, um, emotionally, I don't know. I don't know how I want to finish that statement, but um, anything that, that hurts you, okay? Anything that um, breaks your heart could really be anything. It doesn't necessarily have to be a relationship, but what I'm feeling here is that this is in fact a relationship. Now this could just be a friendship. This could just be a good, uh, a, like a, a very, very close friend, maybe even a best friend. Um, it could be a, a relationship with a family member, brother, sister, mother, father, aunt, uncle, grandma, grandpa, cousin, second cousin, friend, whatever. Um, uh, or this could be a romantic relationship. Now you have the three of swords. After that came the two of pentacles. So what I was picking up on when I saw that initially was that there's some sort of potential breakup that could be happening here. Um, but somebody here, maybe it's you Aquarius. It could most likely it could be you. Um, but someone here is trying to number one, keep the peace is what I'm hearing. Number two it, is kind of juggling Things. I really feel like what this two of pentacles with the three of swords is saying is that some of you may really be in the process of just kind of putting a bandaid over it or just like kind of pushing whatever the situation is off to the side because you have some, there's, there are, there's more to the situation um, that you would need to honor, stay aware of, um, still be responsible for. Um, and so this is why I feel like this really could be either a marriage or um, a really strongly, uh, um, gosh, the word, the, the strong, uh, uh, established, there we go, <laughs> a, a strongly established relationship. Um, now, it's funny because I was, I was just going off of those two cards initially and I was like, wow, this really does feel like some sort of relationship issue. And then I just kept shuffling to get a little bit more clarity and the nine of swords came out and I was like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. And then I noticed that there was another card underneath it, the two of cups. And, th and then at that and uh, once I finished that, I looked underneath the deck and you've got the hierophant. So... This is either, a, I'm hearing strongly that this is a marriage and it doesn't necessarily have to be a marriage it, 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 um, in the physical sense, like an official legal marriage. It could be a situation in which you two are just really bound together. This could be like some sort of spiritual commitment or marriage or something. It just It just feels like, even though you may not necessarily actually have the marriage certificate and all of that, it just feels like it's a relationship or a situation that 
either could lead to marriage or like basically like you guys are technically married. Uh, not technically, basically married, <laughs> if that makes sense. But yes, um, but uh, also if it's not a marriage, then it's something that's really well established, okay? The Hierophant does represent establishment, um, you know, things like religion, university, uh, the status quo, things that have been established, things that have, that have been, you know, socially acceptable in a way, whatnot, whatever. Um, Honestly, I don't even, I, and, and this is just the pre-shuffle, Aquarius, so I mean, I don't, I, don't, I don't know if there really is anything I should tell you. I really kind of want to say, let's get into the rest of the reading to see what really is going on here for you and how to handle it, because I'm trying to pick this out and feel it out and see what kind of advice I can give you, but you're, I, I kind of feel like you're already doing it. You're already, you know, with this two of pentacles, regardless of what, and I just saw 555 on the counter, by the way, which is cool, but regardless of whatever pain you're feeling, your, your diplomacy, your diplomatic side is taking the lead here. And so you're really focused on not, gosh, because uh, now I want to say, I was going to say you're not focused on um, dealing with this. Um, but what I'm hearing really is that you're not focused, and, and, and by that I mean you're not really trying to focus on the heartbreak because there are some other things that need to, that, that take precedence here, that need to be held up. But also I'm kind of getting an energy uh, with this two of pentacles also that you're not really dealing with it. It's almost as if you're trying to hide from it because you don't want to experience the emotions. And... I don't think it was last month. It might have been for May, the reading for May, but I remember specifically saying to you, Aquarius, that you need to face your emotions. Uh, and honestly, I'm going to... Okay, all right, cool. So here's the advice that's coming through for this part of the reading here. I would not recommend that you run from this. I would not recommend at all that you just kind of like sweep this under the rug, especially if we're talking about a marriage here, or even if it's not, again, it, it, it doesn't have to be a physical, literal marriage. Um, but whatever this relationship is, like, I would not sweep this under the rug. Yes, do whatever it needs, needs to be done. Handle business, okay? But also, like, when the time is right, Somebody, y'all need to talk about this. I don't know, maybe, I mean, I'm channeling for a ton of different people right now, so it, you really could run the spectrum of whatever type of betrayal you might feel like is going on in your relationship or in your life, um, or heartbreak. But regardless of what it specifically is, it needs to be dealt with, it needs to be handled. Obviously, it probably can't be handled right away, but it needs to be, all right? Don't run from this, Aquarius, okay? Face your emotions, and I also want to tell you to face your fears. Just got to do it. All right, here we go. Woo! I do want to say this. I am seeing you standing as the King of Swords right now. And officially, that is your card in the Minor Arcana. The King of Swords represents Aquarian energy. But logic and reason are, are winning out here. But that's not always such a good thing. At some point, you have to put logic and reason aside and deal with the emotions. Deal with the illogical part of the irrational parts of yourself, I guess you could say. Um, no one, no one person, no matter where you fall on the zodiacs, uh, in the wheel of the zodiac, and keep in mind, we all have all of the signs within us. There are just certain signs that we express more in these in physical incarnations to learn, experience certain things. But no matter where you are, you are on the, uh, on the zodiac scale or whatever, uh, spectrum, whatever, you have both a logical and an illogical, a, a logical side and an intuitive emotional side. And both of them need to be expressed, balanced, honored, and um, yeah. What is another word I'm looking for? I'm really, 
at a loss for words today. <laughs> But I think you're getting it. So you have to, if you want to be, to continue, if you want to be a balanced person, if you want to be able to handle your life efficiently and take whatever life has to throw at you, you have to be able to balance and integrate both of those sides, okay? Excellent. Let's get into the rest of the reading here for you, Aquarius. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Aquarians, sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good for all involved for the month of July, 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. Oh yes, Aquarius, we are definitely dealing with matters of the heart here because I'm seeing green. Um, and if you're new to my channel, I'm going to give this five shuffles, by the way. But if you're new to my channel, then you probably are, don't know the fact that when I, when I channel for people, I often see colors that help me um, decipher what's going on. Um, and I'm seeing green, which um, is the color of, of healing. Yes, it's also the color of the heart chakra. And as I was looking into that color for for meaning as to why it was coming forward, I was hearing matters of the heart. Three. And with that came a bit of purple, which is a color of divine wisdom, also uh, the, the third eye chakra, but also a certain shade of purple, like a, maybe a lighter purple does represent the crown chakra. Um, and so there are some downloads here that are happening. There is a new insight that's happening here. Four. I mean, you're dealing with matters of the heart while also gaining downloads from the universe that are expanding your wisdom. And five. So please, Aquarius, do not run from this. I know it might be painful, it's uncomfortable, it's pushing you out of your comfort zone, but to be quite honest, this is going to accelerate your growth boop, in ways that you may have never even thought possible, in ways that you probably don't even expect. So please do not run from this, okay? Well, shit, Aquarius. <laughs> the first card we have in your overall energy is the Hanged Man. I mean, this is literally what I was just talking about. The, the Hanged Man is about being in a precarious position. It's about willfully hanging yourself in a place or in a situation that in which you cannot move. You're immobile. You're stuck. But it's doing this. Now, now okay. Before I go any further, because I'm, I'm already hearing your, your concerns, I know you're not consciously and willfully putting yourself in a situation in which you're now facing a shit ton of heartbreak, maybe even the potential of the dissolution of your family uh, or the family that you've built or the relationship that you've been, ooh, I just wanted to say trying to fix up or trying to work on okay um but ultimately we are placed in these circumstances by our own selves yes um and when we get into this when we get into this um into the light into life into you know the 3d world we forget all of the planning that we made on the other side before we incarnated here and so a lot of these all of these lessons really are set up by our own selves for healing and for growth and so thus you have the energies of the hanged man where you are now in a precarious position you might feel stuck and stagnant trapped even but it's meant to bring you enlightenment okay it's meant to get you to adopt a new perspective to see things from a different point of view to see things differently to understand to grow wiser stronger more efficient that kind of thing and even as i'm saying all that i feel like it's re it's resonating with you aquarius but you've got to deal with the uncomfortable stuff. It's in the things that are the most uncomfortable for you that you find the most growth. It's in the situations that push you out of your comfort zone that you expand and grow stronger, faster, and the most, okay? So again, I mean, please don't run from this, but I guess I really should be saying, please don't try to run from this. You can run, but you can't hide. That's really the kind of energy I'm getting from, wow. So then you have temperance underneath that. Oh man, Aquarius, underneath temp. Whoa, yes, Aquarius, you have the sun. This is big. And then finally, there's that two of cups again. 
I do feel like this is going to work out for a, a vast majority of you. This is going to work out. You're situated. You're, you probably will not leave this relationship. Um, I feel like both of you, this is a, this is a strong, strong lesson in love and in life for the both of you it, or for however many people are involved in this situation okay it doesn't have to be just a romantic relationship again this is a general reading so please take it as it resonates and if it is resonating but it's not specifically how i'm describing it then place it as it fits okay keep in mind that i am channeling for thousands of people okay um but this is really a good thing. You might be dealing with a Sagittarian. You might also be dealing with a Pisces or a Leo, okay? Um, but it doesn't have to be. Also, you could have these energies in your chart, uh, dominant in dominant placements in your chart. Uh, but this really is a good thing. Between temperance and the sun, there is a new alchemization that's happening. You're going through an alchemization, al al alchemizing process. You're becoming, you're transmuting yourself. You're combining, you're, you're, you're flowing with it. You're, you're expanding. You're becoming something brand new. So yes, this is going to be very uncomfortable. But the sun is saying that everything is going to be a-okay. All right? But this is absolutely a major change for you because you have these three major arcana here. So this is big. This is life change. These are life changing circumstances right here. All right. And I'm hearing for some of you that this relationship that you're having trouble with, that you're struggling with right now, it, it's got this, this, this challenge, this, these challenging times or these challenging energies are really going to take you guys to a whole new level, a much deeper love, a much deeper level. For some of you, you're dealing with an energy of absolutely um, integrating your masculine and feminine sides, your logical and your intuitive sides. The Two of Cups can represent a romantic partnership, but it also can represent the balance of masculine and feminine within, okay? So yeah. For some of you, you're dealing with that specifically. For others of you, this whatever's going on in this relationship or these certain, certain circumstances is helping build that bond between the two or at least could help build that bond between the masculine and feminine within okay all right so getting into the rest of the reading here for um first half and second half you can look at this as the first half of your month or the second half of your month or you can look at it as the first half and second half of your reading i recommend the first half second half of the reading because time is an illusion and energies are fluid and these messages can flow around with this way and that and, in, and intertwine in all different places but do what is feels best for you if it does resonate as first half second half of your month then go with it okay here we go. First set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius. In the first half of your reading, you have the Three of Wands. You are, in fact, on the right path, Aquarius. Okay. So whomever is out there that's really questioning that, that could be saying to yourself, holy shit, what the hell have I gotten myself into? How did I get here? How did this happen? Why is this happening to me? I can't believe this is this. This can't be right. This can't be my life. No, 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 no. Pull yourself out of that. Pull yourself out of that. And just recognize the lessons for what they are. You are, in fact, on the right path. Okay. This is also a card of waiting for um, uh, a return on an investment. But here's the thing, Aquarius, you can either, because often this Three of Wands card is depicted as somebody standing um, like on a shore and a boat has just come in. It's not in this depiction, but in other, in other, card, in other decks, it's depicted as somebody is like their ships have come in. So often you'll hear readers say that this card is like, waiting for a return on an investment or waiting for your ships to come in. But the thing about that, Aquarius, is that when, when, the ships, when the ship does come in, unless you have a harbor, you know, the ship's not going to be able to come right up. Well, even if you do have a harbor, the ship's not going to be able to come up right up to the shore. It has to stay in water that's deep enough to not <laughs> run the ship aground, um, but still allow people to get to it. So, okay, if you've got a dock, then great. But you still got to walk down that dock to get to the boat, 
that just came in. Now, if there is no dock, you've got to figure out a way to get yourself to that boat, or you're just going to sit there waiting until the people on the boat get to the ship. Like, why not meet them halfway? You know what I mean? So I'm saying all that to say, you could either just sit back and let this take you wherever it's going to take you, or you can be proactive. It's up to you. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest with you right now. The more proactive you are, without overdoing it, obviously, but the more proactive you are, the stronger you're going to get, the easier this is going to be, and probably the less time you're going to have to deal with it. Right? Three of Wands is coupled with... Who? The Knight of Swords. Well... Uh, Gemini energy, but this also could, also could be you. But you see, this is that proactive energy that I was just talking about. Because this Knight of Swords is charging in to handle the situation. Okay. Yeah, this could be a battle. Kind of feels like a battle. I would just caution you against being too vicious. I'm kind of getting a little bit of a Queen of Swords energy also from this, but... This also feels like defending yourself. Okay. It's perfectly valid. Second set of surrounding energies for you, Aquarius, in the first half of your reading here, you have... Ooh! The King of Wands. Uh, again, more Leo energy. You could be dealing with a Leo. You could have Leo in your chart. Um, also could be another fire sign, Aries or Sagittarius, but, um, self-confidence and also waiting for the right time to strike. Yes. This is exactly what I was talking about earlier when I was saying, look, handle your business, handle what needs to be handled with that two of pentacles energy, but don't just sweep this under the rug. At some point you have to handle this. You have to deal with it. The king of wands energy is speaking straight to that because the king of wands is an energy or is an individual that knows exactly what he wants and he knows exactly how to get it but he also knows the right time to when the right time to strike is okay so he is he'll often just sit back and watch and just wait and that's kind of what i feel like you either need to be doing or are doing right now which is good but don't lose your self-confidence don't lose your lose your faith in yourself and really try not to lose your passion for you know I want to say what you believe in. Also, though, the passion that you may have had for this relationship or this situation before the Three of Swords energy, energy struck, okay? You may want to take some time to re-identify why you were so passionate about this to begin with and why you may have lost it in over time. That really could help you understand what needs to be understood truly in this situation. King of Wands is coupled with... Oh, uh, the Empress. All right, I like that. Um, unconditionally loving yourself while also unconditionally loving others. I, I really kind of want to tell you that your needs, your desires, your wants are not... Oh, God. The, um, it's, a, it's like someone f feels like someone has been either telling you or making you feel like, what you require out of relationship, what you require out of love, or what you just need in any given situation is frivolous, over the top, not necessary, but no, no. Underst uh, uh, oh, wow. Love yourself enough to know that your needs are not superficial. I mean, there are so many different words that I could go with that, but... It just feels like someone has been trying to make you, or maybe you have been trying to make someone else feel like they're just, what they're requiring out of the relationship is unnecessary. And that's where that Three of Swords energy could come from, that heartbreak. Because the Empress to me is an unconditionally loving being. I mean, she's, she's borderline, um, uh, I'm so sorry, Aquarius. I'm really having trouble with my words today. Um, she She's borderline enabler, a borderline enabler. And she really even could be when the, when the Empress energy is like kind of 
out of whack or reversed a little bit, she could be very much an enabler where she just gives and gives and gives and allows people and because, but it's, she's coming from a place of love, unconditional love, okay? So that's, the, but that's where the energy of you need to love yourself enough to know that your desires or your needs in a certain situation are, are, are valid. So don't lose your faith or your confidence or your belief in yourself, okay? Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, Aquarius, you have the four of wands, the home, the family life. Wow. Your challenge is, oh, this, this, this kind of hurts. Um, some of you don't want to lose your home or your family structure. You've been trying really hard to do what it is you need to do to maintain the structure or maintain that's built or what's maintain what has been built, um, the foundation that has been built over this over time. But I feel like you're draining yourself. You or whomever. You are maintaining, you are trying to maintain this sense of stability and home and family at the expense of yourself. And that's not fair. It's not fair at all. Four of Wands is coupled with the star. Oh, I might start crying. Um, because this is just everything that you've always dreamed of. It's everything you've always wanted, but, oh, wow. And that's where that Hierophant energy is coming in too that came out through the pre-shuffle. There's a sense of conformity. It's like you feel like you have to do things a certain way just to get what you've been dreaming and wishing for. But doing it in that way is at the expense of your own self, of your own authenticity, of your own happiness and i'm not saying you're not happy because what you have here or what you've built does in a sense make you happy because it's what you've been wanting but at the same time you have to be someone different than who you truly are in a or in, in order for this to stand and that's not fair to you it's also not fair to the people that you're that you know you're associated with even though they're reaping the benefits of this it's not fair to them because you're, in a sense, kind of living a lie. So now the question here is, how do I really get what I've always wished for while still honoring myself? That's the challenge here, four of wands and the star. Closing message or potential outcome in the first half of your reading here, you have... The Wheel of Fortune. This is a good thing. Time will tell. Time really will tell. There's a little bit of karma here that someone's having to deal with. That was a little bit of a flash. It's not something major. The Wheel of Fortune is coupled with the Page of Cups. Okay, so, but the karma here, actually, what karma is being spoken of here is um, basically you need to stay in alignment, all right? The, all is not lost. And this is why I really do want to say, I want to reiterate that you are, in fact, on the right path because ultimately this is all teaching you how to stay in alignment with yourself and how to manifest what it is you truly desire. So what the Page of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune represents to me, the Page of Cups being a dreamer energy, the Wheel of Fortune being the cycle, the random cycle of life that you know we have chosen to step into. So you can't really, um, you can't really manipulate the Wheel of Fortune at all. All you can do is allow it to turn, but then keep your vibration in check. Make sure you maintain the highest vibration, in, especially in relation to the Wheel of Fortune as it turns in your life, to make sure that you are getting the best, most ideal outcome. Because 
<coughs> excuse me, the universe is in no is not in the business of saying of telling us no. They always the, the universe will constantly just keep giving us giving us yeses. So, but those yeses are in alignment with how we feel about ourselves, the the our vibrational reality and all that stuff. So if you really want the best in a situation, you need to maintain your highest ideal, your highest vibrational um, uh, state. And that's what this is talking about here. So allow yourself to dream and allow yourself to align with your ideal situation, okay? Let the universe work out all the dirt, the nitty gritty details that you really couldn't even begin to keep track of. You got to maintain your vibration, okay? Getting into the second half of your reading here, Aquarius, first set of surrounding energies you have. Whoa, sorry. Ah, the two of wands now. Interesting. Um, the two, the three of wands is in the first part in this position, and now the two of wands is in the second half. Um, and that does kind of fe seem like it's out of order, but now you have the, now you're in a place to make a decision. And that decision is, I feel like how you want to approach this situation. Where do you want to go from here? Choose wisely because the wheel is turning, right? And so whatever, wherever the wheel turning lands, I feel like is going to give like a boost to this it's either going to be a boost or a detriment to this choice that you're needing to make in how you want to move forward now, given the circumstances that you're dealing with or given what you now know. Um, so again, this is really why you have to maintain your highest vibrational state as much as you, as much as you can. I'm not trying to say, I mean, it's really unrealistic to think that we're going to be in a high vibration all the time, 24 seven, like, no doesn't work that way <laughs> but a a as much as you can you know what i mean two of wands is coupled with Woo -wee! the five of wands now this isn't so bad okay the five of wands is just talking about differing of opinion um inner turmoil uh i'm hearing not seeing clearly also not seeing eye to eye um some of you are facing leaving an established relationship or an established circumstance and you're kind of torn apart or at odds with yourself about it because it's like I can't how can I abandon these people or how can I abandon this circumstance or this situation but I mean you're not think about it this way though like how long have you been abandoning abandoning yourself in order to keep the peace or to make other people happy right at some point, you really got to start thinking about you. You can't be there for other people unless you are there for yourself first. You have to make sure that you come first so that you can be in tip top shape to do what it is that you want to do for the people around you. Okay? This Five of Wands mostly feels like inner turmoil because I really don't even feel like you've been discussing this much with other people other than some really true close friends. And even then, it's really not, you're not giving them all of the information for them to really like know what you're going through. So most of what I'm picking up on here, this turmoil, this conflict, this um, differing of opinion, it's internal. Internal conflict, yes. Second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here, Aquarius. The Four of Cups. This really doesn't feel like it's a current missed opportunity. This feels like you're anticipating missing yet another opportunity to love yourself, to heal yourself. You've got these three cups here, right? That's the, that are in front of you. The Three of Cups being like a social setting friendship, family gatherings, whatnot, whatever. But then the universe is trying to hand you this Ace of Cups right behind you. And that Ace of Cups represents self-love, divine love, unconditional love. But you're so focused on what that would mean for the Three of Cups that's in front of you for you to take that Ace of Cups that you're facing missing yet another opportunity to heal and to love yourself. But again, if you want to be there for those people in your life, you have to be there for yourself first. 
Four of Cups is coupled with the High Priestess. The universe is trying to get you to learn to love yourself. And there is heavy feminine influence here between the queen, I'm, I'm sorry, the empress and the, the high priestess now. There's strong feminine influence here. Even the star, because the star does have a woman on it. But, oh, also, <laughs> this is you, Aquarius. <laughs> the star, sorry. Uh, totally lost me. Uh, skipped, whatever. But, this is the universe stepping in and saying, we need you to love yourself. We're trying to help you learn how to do this. And especially that's where the, eight, the, um, the, the green of the heart chakra, um, heart-centered situations, and the purple of the divine wisdom. That is, this is that divine wisdom right here. I really do feel like some of you are also at a gateway because the, the high priestess is kind of a gatekeeper. Um, she, she will only give passage through the gates or give knowledge of what she knows, what she is aware of, and she knows all, to those who show they are ready to handle it. They are ready for it. So I do feel like some of you are at a, at a major gateway and some of this information that you could be getting or that you're about to get is could be a real game changer for a lot of you. Like serious awakening moment. Some of you also are learning about why or gaining insight as to why you may have missed some opportunities or this opportunity in the past here. Okay? That would be information, downloads, whatever coming through through the high, the energies of the high priestess. Your challenge in the second half of your reading here, Aquarius, eight of wands, communication, movement, taking action. That's your challenge. You got to communicate. You got to really tell, talk about what you're truly feeling, what you're truly experiencing, what you really need out of a relationship or out of this situation. You have to communicate about that. But some of you are really afraid to do that because you just want to keep the peace. You don't want to rock the boat. You don't want the boat to capsize even. And some of you have been, oh, maybe the breadwinner or the leader in this group or this situation for so long that people are even kind of dependent on you now. And that's sticky. I get it. It's sticky. But a leader needs to be cared for as well. Right? Yeah. Eight of Wands is coupled with the Fool. Taking a leap of faith. Moving in a new direction. Starting over. Starting a new life cycle. Just, just take that leap. Take that leap of faith and communicate. Talk about your feelings, talk about your problems, your emotions, talk about what is hurting you, what's not working for you, what needs to be fixed. And in all honesty, guys, if you do open yourself up to the people that are closest to you and you find and that their reaction is less than desirable, that tells you a lot right there. But see, some of you are aware of that, and you don't want to. You don't want to open that can of worms. Okay. So you can either stay in this really painful space, or you can do what's necessary to break yourself free. And really manifest the life that you desire. Okay. Closing message or potential outcome for you, Aquarius, in the second half of your reading, you have the Ace of Swords. Communication, truthfulness, honesty, speaking clearly, seeing clearly, seeing things for what they truly are, and then taking action from there, but also speaking your truth. Ace of Swords is coupled with The Eight of Cups. Walking away. 
leaving the past behind you. Maybe, maybe leaving the drama behind you. Okay. But I am picking up that for some of you, this is speaking some sort of truth that's going to set you on a journey of self-discovery. Or there's some information or some sort of knowledge that you're going to gain, wisdom that you're going to gain, insight, an aha moment that, again, is going to set you on a journey of self-discovery. And I actually, um, my very, a very good friend, my, my good friend Betsy of Fearless Intuition, if you don't know her, please check her out. She's fantastic. But she's the one that put me on to that, this definition of the Eight of Cups being a journey of self-discovery. Because the Eight of Cups here represents eight, it's eight neatly stacked cups that, you know, on the surface look like it's great, but for some reason, something just isn't right or something isn't as fulfilling as one would have thought. And so now, either you're walking away from these cups altogether to start anew, or you're simply just walking away to go find what it is that would actually be fulfilling to then bring it back to complete all of the, that stack of eight to a ten. Sometimes I personally like to say that the Eight of Cups um, is someone walking away going to look for this Two of Cups, which would be the relationship, a marriage, a, a solid commitment, a solid partnership to then complete your 10, which I don't have on the table here, but. Don't be afraid of speaking your truth, Aquarius. Please. It's necessary. You really do need to do that at this point. Let's get into your clarif uh, not your clarification, your oracle guidance for the month of a July. One more shuffle for my Aquarians here. All right. Best message, please, spirit close out this reading for my Aquarians, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. You know, Aquarius, it's funny. It's too many. It's funny because I was trying to do this reading yesterday, um, but I couldn't, and the energy was really rough, and I didn't know, because yesterday was kind of a rough day energetically for me, um, and so I, don't, I didn't know... But now that I'm getting into it here, I'm like, oh, wow. Okay, I really was kind of tapping into your energy a little bit. Because this does feel rough. There we go. Ah, yes, 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 yes. This is beautiful. And actually, this is quite perfect. You have card number 24, new birth, guarded, vigilantly. All right, here we go. In every creative process, in every birth, in every opening of a new cycle of life, there is a time of vulnerability. This vulnerability is natural and appropriate. It is the foal, foul, foal, it's the foal, excuse me. It's the foal learning to become steady on its legs. Uh, those legs will become remarkably powerful in time, but the process of growth and maturity has to take place, and that requires some wobbly first attempts. It cannot be any other way. Within you, perhaps even below the level of your conscious awareness, there is a fresh new life emerging like a vibrant green shoot rising up from the earth. This new life is in need of your attention and your care. This could be a new relationship that needs tending with interest and kindness. It could be a new idea that you need to nurture into fullness because it is going to hold special purpose for your life path. It might be something within you, a new behavior, a new way of looking at yourself, or a new way of being in the world that you need to tend to until it becomes more natural for you to embody. This is most significantly so if you have also drawn the oracle of defend to the end, which we have not. Um, okay, let's go here. You will not always need to cloak that which is young. Soon enough, it will be able to stand up for itself. But for now, your vigilance and care is most certainly required. Oh, I'm sorry. 
Oh, OK, wait, no, I'm sorry. I need to go back and read some more of this. What, in this deck, sometimes they, um, they associate other cards with each other because the messages are good together. But anyway, I'm going to read, I'm gonna read all of this, even though we haven't drawn these other cards, OK? This is most significantly so if you have also drawn the oracle of defend to the end, the worthwhile. If you feel drawn to do so, do so read the guidance of that card now. We're not going to do that. Um, if you have also drawn the oracle of she feels, she knows, or feel intuitively guided to read that message, then go, go ahead and do so. <laughs> if you have this deck, go ahead and do that. You must pay attention to the new life emerging for you now, or that, will soon, or that you will soon sense. You must not be careless and think it doesn't matter. It matters greatly. Being careless now is akin to killing off the idea before it has a chance to grow strong enough to withstand the criticism, jealousy, or sabotage by dark consciousness in others or yourself. You, we don't have to be uh, frightened of destructive energy. It exists in nature and in us and is a part of life. We do, however, need to be intelligent to its potential power and stay centered in our heart and in our wisdom to avoid its ill effect upon that which we are nurturing into life. You will not always need to cloak that which is young. Soon enough, it will be able to stand up for itself. But for now, your vigilance and care is most certainly required. Hug your ideas to yourself as though you are a new lover you cannot bear to share with another, as though they are a new lover that you cannot bear to share with another. In time, the world will be the lover, wait, in time, the world will be the lover receiving the love in your idea. For now, it is for you to love, for you to hold, and for you to observe. Only allow those proven to be trustworthy to support you in this, those who can handle the frequency or vibration of what you are seeking to nurture. Some may love you, but be frightened of what you are creating. Stay true to yourself and your creative power and be wise as to whom you invite into your inner sanctum to witness this new life emerging. This also, I'm sorry, this oracle also brings particular guidance about keeping your inner sanctuary pure. This may be your room, a sacred place you visit, or your own body into which you retreat in relaxation or meditation. Sometimes you will find that others have taken up residence in your sanctuary. Perhaps an argument that you cannot let go of has, either, has another living in your head. A suffering that has not been acknowledged and released can feel like a big old dirty suitcase of emotional baggage cluttering up the temple space of your heart. It is time to focus on your purity. It is time to focus on the purity, light, love, and compassion that dwells within you. Everything else will come and go, and that is just fine. But the purity within your sanctuary is eternal. You can come back to it. Ref you can. Come back to it to refresh your spirit and gain resources to help you deal with the rest of the world and even your own darker moments anew. It will give you the peace and spaciousness of mind you need to recognize the new life and to compassionately but firmly denounce any intrusion upon that new life with by doubt, fear, or sabotage. So there you have it, Aquarius. I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for tuning in. Again, if you would like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below. But with that, I hope you guys have a great month, and I look forward to connecting with you again for the month of August. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!